everybody's just kind of watching what other people are doing and there's a few kind of innovators and everybody else is just you know kind of on the tail of well whatever that person was doing I'm gonna try and do a slightly different version of it For me personally I always try and provide as much value as I can and just help people for no other reason than knowing that like at some point I might need help from someone else and it's a, a value exchange right most of the fitness industry's skill set is pretty simple to achieve um, but the sales side is more difficult and and really the mindset what would you say the biggest lessons you've learned from that pivot and switching industries if you're an online coach trainer or someone in the online marketing space who wants to learn a wealth of wisdom from a man who i would almost say has been like a fatherly figure to me over the last 12 months which is something i don't take for granted and um, have a huge amount of praise for craig for he's got a huge amount of experience and has helped me guide me through some challenging times in particular recently um, so Craig has uh, a couple of wonderful books he's written, Perfect Day Formula, The Perfect Week Formula, which I'd highly suggest everyone reads. And I would say your gift is CEO mastery and getting people to actually put the, the rubber down to the road and um, do the work and apply themselves in the right direction. How would you define yourself, actually, Craig's a good question. Um, first of all, I think that's really great. Second of all, uh, you know, I appreciate the father figure reference. I hear that from like a, a few guys in their early 30s. And I'm like, man, I must have been a really busy teenager. <laughs> but, uh, but seriously, you know, back to how would I define myself? Um, we use this analogy that's actually similar to the way that you describe it. You know, rubber meets the road and going in the right direction. And the way that I've said what I do to a lot of people is, you know, most of the people that come to us are high performers. They're, they're really ambitious. They're really driven. But they're just like, you know, a Formula One car that has spun out and it's in the, the grass and the mud and it's spinning its wheels. And it's like, it's like six inches from the track. And I'm just this crane that comes along and picks it up and, you know, sometimes has to turn it around so it's going the right way. And then I put it down. I put you down. I put the, the high performers down on the road and the asphalt. And the next thing you know, they're going 200 miles per hour down the road uh, in the right direction, straight line to success. So that's the way that I feel like it is what I do, you know, metaphorically. But what it is that we do kind of more in a brass tacks thing is we get people, um, the inner entrepreneur organized and with systems in place, personal systems, and then we transfer those personal systems over into the organization and then into all aspects, you know, the operations, sales and marketing and that sort of stuff. And because a lot of the stuff, once people implement this stuff, they step back and go, oh, this is pretty simple. And I, I think that you'd probably feel the same way, like the changes that we made. It's like, oh, I see. Like, this is pretty simple. It works so well. Um, but most people don't see it until they can see it. <laughs> and so that's, a, that's what we do. And I'm, I'm glad we had a chance to do that for you. And you know, my life's work here is to do it for so many other people. 100%. I'd be interested to get your perspective, and I'm sure the listeners would. What do you think was the main thing the main lever you pulled with me to help me i would say almost get out my own way if that makes sense i would say that um you know you're you're like most of us entrepreneurs is that you you will work you're a worker you have great work ethic you will put all the stuff on your back um but you know you had people on your team who could do more themselves you um were doing things that you could do like at a pretty good rate, but you know there was other people out there who could do them a little bit better, and so why not bring those people on? And then it was just perhaps um, getting everything flowing in the right direction. You know, so one project might have been taking us this way, and then another project kind of taking us almost the exact opposite direction. And if you're going, if you're rowing in two different directions, then you're just going to kind of stay uh, stuck. And so we gave you a little bit more clarity on what mattered. Um, assign some of those important things to other people who were competent enough to do it. And for those people who needed help with that, we helped you put into place an accountability system within your business so that you raise those people's levels of skills up and you help them become what they were capable of being. And then now all of a sudden you don't just have one talented hard worker running the, you know, in the business, you have multiple talented, relatively hardworking people all going in the right direction. And that's a synergistic effect. And, you know, you were, I think you were just saying right before we got started that you're really 
tripling or quadrupling the number of people in your mastermind group in the last 12 months. It's absolutely fantastic and well-deserved because now you're downloading into them what I was able to download into you, plus all the specialties that you bring from your own experience in, in growing the online businesses. So that's what it was, and that's what it tends to be for, for most people, is that ambitious people start businesses and they do everything themselves until they get to the point where it's like, I can't do it myself because either things are not going well enough or I'm grinding myself into the ground. And, you know, that's just a recipe for disaster. 100%. What, what would you say, like, most kids, younger guys are doing wrong? Trying to do it all themselves? <clears throat> um, I think that, you know, on a technical aspect, they haven't mastered sales. <clears throat> and there's a lot of done for you stuff. And, I would imagine you are the same way as I am that you get an infinite amount of direct messages from young men. <clears throat> and that's cool. Listen, that's fine. I appreciate the hustle. Sometimes, you know, we have, we have openings in our company for phone setters and right now. And so I will send them, you know, we've actually got a couple of people who've DM'd me and have gotten an opportunity. So I think that they're good at that. You know, which copying, pasting, and sending a lot of messages. Okay, great. But they don't then understand the nuance of the sales aspect of it. And so, you know, some guy DM'd me last week and was trying to pitch me on an AI uh, direct messaging thing. <clears throat> and he was, you know, giving it to his first five clients. And so I'm like, okay, wait a minute here. Um, you don't have any clients, but you have this AI messaging system that is going to help me get more clients and you're doing it yourself. So I don't understand how your thing is actually gonna help me. And, and so it's, just, it's not just messaging people and, and with this pitch and, say, and thinking that that's how it's gonna be. It's gotta be like a actual valuable offer and then you've gotta have uh, the sales process behind it. So energy and, and work is great as long as you also develop the skill set to do that and then what you need to do is you need to make sure that you go through the feedback loop as many times as possible as you can. And at first, it's really going to suck. And then this is where uh, kind of like the higher level mistake that people make is they jump around from thing to thing. Yeah, I don't, I don't do a lot of courses or anything. I try and learn directly from people. And so the great thing is, is that in my position now, you know, we have, we have a bunch of coaches in our, in, in our company and they're the experts in, you know, we have Daniel, who's an expert in leadership. We have Gavin, who is an expert in mindset. We have Golel, who is an expert in both marketing and artificial intelligence. So he's really into that stuff. And I don't know anything about artificial intelligence. And I'm not the world's best leader. And I've never really done a lot of mindset stuff. So I just watch these guys teach at our masterminds. And then I hold a lot of mastermind events where we bring in people, like in our one in May next year, we're going to have Jason Capital there. And Jason Capital has been a longtime friend. He's spoken at a lot of my masterminds. He comes in. And then I have a lot of dinners with people. So, you know, even like these days, I'm really interested in parenting advice because we have a couple of young ones. And so recently I had dinner with Jason Capital and this guy, Sharon Srivatsa. And I was asking Sharon, who has two kids that are a little bit older than mine, his parenting advice. And I think that's the best way you get advice is that one-on-one, -on -one, whether you pay to play and, and hire the person as a coach or whether you go to events and you not only learn from the speakers on stage, which you know at the right event can be good, but also sit down with certain people and you know take them out to dinner, or you know just talk to them in the hallway as much as you can, because that personal experience is going to be the best thing. And setting aside your ego and asking as many questions as possible and being prepared in advance, like you're prepared in advance for the for our conversation today, just making sure you've really thought about what are the most important questions that you want answered so that you don't lose out on time with very smart and um, experienced individuals. And I think, you know, just that just brings up something I look back on. I go, I've spent a lot of time with very successful people and I feel like I wasted that time because I didn't have mature enough questions. You know, it's kind of like, hey, what do you, you know, so tell me your story and like, so what do you do? When do you work? And it just wasn't like, getting deep enough. And um, fortunately, I've had a lot of good conversations with other people where I've learned a lot of stuff deeply, but I probably missed out on a few great opportunities. So to the person listening, get to know as many more successful people as you possibly can, whether it's, you know, you know, you live, you live above that gym, I think in Dubai, where there's so many smart people, like you could probably just hang out there for four hours after your workout and, and 
grill people that are really smart and wealthy and successful and get secrets. Um, you know, our, our mutual friend Serge is one guy that you probably could learn from. And, but, you know, so it's whether it's at the gym or conferences or networking stuff, just get to know as many smart, successful people as possible and you'll get all the answers you need. I agree. I, I like the saying, uh, the more hands you shake, the more money you make. Because like, just from, to- oh, yeah, just from talking to different people, and I also think from completely different industries, you get completely different perspectives, which I've noticed hanging around 90% of people who are in the fitness industry. I actually really enjoy conversations with people from something completely different because they see and think completely differently than people from my core industry, if that makes sense. No, 100%, because everybody's just kind of watching what other people are doing, and there's a few kind of innovators, and everybody else is just you know, kind of on the tail of, well, whatever that person was doing, I'm going to try and do a slightly different version of it. <clears throat> but likewise, if, or on the opposite other hand, if you're hanging around some guy who's in the crypto space and like, yeah, this is what we do. And we go deep down this rabbit hole and you're like, whoa, I never even looked at, you know, the universe like that. That'll really expand your thinking and, and your chances of success. So I love that phrase. And one thing, one little phrase that I've came up with, because it also applies to your personal life. Like if you want to be successful at the gym or in love or in whatever, the same applies. And I just, I have this phrase, you know, the more good people you know, the easier everything in your life will be. So the more good people you know, the easier everything in your life will be. And um, I've, I met my wife because I asked, a, a nice lady friend of mine who had a huge network to introduce me to someone. And if I didn't know her and I only met her because, you know, I was in Joe Polish's mastermind group and Joe Polish introduced me to this uh, matchmaker named Carmelia and Carmelia introduced me on a date with this girl, Vanessa and didn't work out with Vanessa, but Vanessa introduced me to Michelle. And so if it wasn't for Joe in the first place, I don't know if I would have gotten there. Um, without knowing a lot of good people. So the more good people you know, the uh, easier everything in life will be because you, if you have a problem, you just go and ask for help. Uh, I, I love stories like that because the sequence of events from that is crazy. And um, correlated to that, I don't know if you remember, but when we were together at one point, I was having a real wobble business-wise and I was probably losing my head a bit. And you said something to me that like, I will remember probably the day I die. And it really resonated with me. It was, um, you're like a made man in the fitness industry. Like you've got like me as contact, sure. you've got Frank, you've got Corby at the time, like whoever else is like, you need to fucking chill out. Like you've got enough good people around you for advice. Like you'll be fine. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I've said that to quite a few people before because when this is really great advice for everybody listening, like you're going to get into a spiral in your life where it's like, oh man, you know, things are hard. Uh, maybe there's some personal stuff going on that are distracting you from the business and the business is, is having a wobble, as you said. And you know, th- there's a million things going on in the world right now which can kind of freak people out. <clears throat> but if you have developed these relationships, you have the answers to almost anything uh, that you need and you will have the support. And if everything does fail away, as long as you... Re- maintain those relationships, you can start from scratch again. And you've got, you know, you're not actually starting from scratch because you know, all these people, you know, all these people, like all these great email marketers back in the day said, you can take everything from me, from my business. You can wipe me out. You can bankrupt me. As long as you let me keep my email list, I'll be rich again in 12 months. And it's true because, you know, it's your list of customers, but it's likewise in the personal world and the professional development world. You can take everything from somebody, but as long as you keep their contacts, uh, you know, provided they were a good person and they add value to other people, people will say, yeah, man, I can, I can give you an opportunity here, you know, come and let's do something. And, you know, it's just those relationships that everyone's going to keep forever. I would say that's one of your gifts. What would you say um, is one of the core things people should really try and focus when it comes to networking and relationships like for me personally i always try and provide as much value as i can and just help people for no other reason than knowing that like at some point i might need help from someone else and it's a a value exchange right yeah absolutely and there's a bunch of things that i i would do first of all is you know really find joy in helping people and if you find joy in helping people then none of the other tips that I'm going to give you really matter because if you find the joy in helping people, then you naturally help a lot of people just like you do and away you go. Now it, there is benefit to kind of organizing things a little bit. 
And so I, I actually keep a list of uh, like a spreadsheet, a Google document of all the people that I connect with and that I can help. And for me, one of the things that I get the greatest, one of, uh, some of the greatest joy from in business is making introductions. So earlier this week, I introduced Jason Capital to this guy, Mark Ford, who's a, a you know, very, very successful uh, newsletter publisher. You know, he's like 70 years old, but everybody wants to talk, talk to Mark Ford. Like Alex Ramosi once asked me introduce, to introduce uh, him to Mark Ford because everybody wants to talk to Mark Ford because he has this book called Ready, Fire, Aim. Everybody from Ryan Dice to Alex Hermosi, you know, they'll rank it in the top five books they've, they've ever read on business. So I just love making those introductions. And so I'll do that and I'll just have, I have a column beside everybody's name. Who can I introduce this person to? Um, what value can I add to somebody? And if somebody, I, you know, if somebody messaged me on Instagram that has a blue check and has a following, I'll just add them to the list. And I just, you know, I just go through it and I put what city they're in and I have this, you know, big chunk of people in Dubai who mostly who I've never met that I'm like, oh, good. So when I go there, I've got these 50 people. Maybe I'll put on an event and invite them or maybe I'll have a dinner for these 10 people or whatever it is because there's another column of like what industry they're in. Like I'm a professional networker that way in that. Because I like one of my true beliefs is the more good people you know, the easier everything in life is. I just really take that seriously. Now, the one thing that people need, because if you do have a lot of young men and women listening to this, they're going to immediately say, but Craig, what could I possibly do to add value? Like Charlie said, you got to add value to people. I'm just this you know, broke, struggling personal trainer or online fitness expert. <clears throat> And the cool thing is I was once a broke, struggling personal trainer, but I have actually done a personal training session for Canada's richest man. And Canada's richest man knows an exponential amount about a very small <laughs> amount of stuff. And outside of that information that he knows a lot about, he doesn't know anything. Like, like he's pretty um, clueless in a lot of areas, including exercise. So he didn't know anything about health and exercise and he was easily um, kind of bamboozled by some of the trainers that did these like freaky, funny work, you know, exercises like everybody's seen at the gym. Like, oh, man, that guy must know what he's doing. He's got somebody on one leg on a dumbbell on a BOSU ball pulling a tube. Right. And he actually thought that was like the right way to train, showing you that, you know, you can be a really, really smart person in one area doesn't necessarily mean you're really smart in another area. I'm also proof of that. <laughs> but anyway, so I added value to this billionaire's life by taking him through a real training session. And so all the fitness people, you have this, you have this skill set that if you believe that health is the best wealth, you actually are richer than most um, billionaires because they're not very healthy. You know, have you ever seen a picture of Elon Musk? He makes fun of himself, but he looked like he looks like a beluga whale. Um, he went to Greece like two summers ago and he's like pasty white and and he's a little heavier, right? And so he was, he was making fun of himself, but he's not in great health, but he's the, like one of the smartest guys in the world, but you could add value to Elon Musk's life. So everybody listening, you could add value to Elon Musk's life. And that's because you have the greatest wealth of all, which is health information. So now what that means is that you can go and add value to anybody. So you can start you know, messaging people on Instagram. And the cool thing about Instagram is I still message people with hundreds of thousands of followers that I've never messaged before. And you, you get an actual message back from that person in some cases, not all the time, but some cases like people, very successful people still check their own Instagram. So if you like you follow some guy or woman and you notice like they just made a post about how their health isn't that great. Well, you just slip into their DMs and you say, hey, I just, I, you know, you just type out something of value. I wouldn't make a video for them because they might not watch it. But I type out something of value and then say, if you want more information, I'll make a quick video on this for you. And you know what? Maybe like nine out of ten people won't ever message you back or might just like it or something. But one person might like it. And now you've got a relationship with somebody with 300,000 followers. And who knows what that can lead to? So everybody has value that they can add. And I think the first place before they get into my, um, you know, making lists and stuff, the first thing is you, you have to believe that you have value to add. And once you do, then it's really easy to grow your network. And the last thing I'll say on that is it's like being a good listener is value. 
So you go to events and conferences and you just go up and you ask a good question to somebody who's really successful and you listen to them. And they go, wow, that was really, really helpful. Um, can I send a follow-up question on that or something? Like, in most cases, in person, people are not going to say no. So networking in person is pretty important. The last thing I'll say on this, though, is that I grew a huge network um, online when around 2001 when the Internet started coming around by not meeting people in person. By, you know, I, had a, I had the uh, original version of a podcast, which was an email newsletter, and I would interview people for my email newsletter. And you know, most people said yes to it. So I started connecting with big names in the fitness industry before you know, I had anything uh, to offer them other than I have an email newsletter and you know, I can get your message in front of a bunch of people. So it's the same, you know, today you do that with podcasts or YouTube videos or whatever. It's another way of giving people exposure is a great way to build your network. Last, last thing I, say, I will say on this, Charlie. Um, you know Richard yeah, Yu, right? Okay, so Richard Yu was a college student several years ago, and today he's very successful online. But several years ago when he was a college student, he, he was like 20 or 19 or 20, um, around then, and he wanted to get connected with Joel Marion. He wanted to get a job with my friend Joel Marion, who, had, who was the um, founder of Biotrust, a, a nine-figure supplement company. And Joel, when he started to go on Instagram, he like, um, you know, did a lot of advertising and grew to like a million followers really fast. And he also had a podcast called Born to Impact. And Richard made 50 videos, not all in the same day, but like every week when Joel had a new podcast, Richard made multiple videos for every podcast and shared them in his stories and tagged Joel. And then he sent multiple direct messages to Joel saying like, hey, I'd love to come and work for you and this, that, and the other thing. And Joel, you know, ignored it or he liked it or whatever. And then he found out that, um, you know, a mutual friend of ours, Vince Del Monte, need, you know, could use somebody in his business. So Joel finally replied to Richard and said, hey, Richard, I don't have a job for you, but my friend Vince has an opportunity for you. And so then Richard went and worked for Vince. And then Joel started this thing called the 100 Million Mastermind and invited Richard to come and just take notes. So I'm paying 100 grand to be in this mastermind because I was in it for a while. I'm paying 100 grand to be there at all the events and Richard's there for free and all he has to do is take notes and send his notes out to everybody. He was a professional note taker. So, so now Richard has a $100,000 free mastermind and a six-figure job with Vince and you know, within a little bit of time, he was like, oh, I, I, I know what business I'm gonna go and start and he went and started. So, that's how you go from, it was like broke college kid to six figure earner in under two years through power of network. One question I want to ask you on that, the networking strategy with a list is genius. Knowing you, do you delegate that to a VA or assistant to handle? No, nah, it's because I love it. Um, I, there's a couple of things that, <clears throat> and it's also like a nuance kind of like only I know, like if, you can probably like AI almost everything. You can AI a sales script. You can AI like, you know, a, a, kind of like a sales bot. You can AI all these things. But can you AI knowing that um, this guy needs to know this guy because this guy's a CFO and this person has a real estate investment fund? Can I, AI? I suppose maybe that I could, but there's so many nuances in my connections that only because of my personal experience and the conversations that I've had with these people will this thing come up. And they're probably more on the personal side. Like I know that this person has a health issue in this area and I have all these health experts. Oh, well, the AI wouldn't know that because unless they had the actual conversation with the person about the health issue, they might know that there's health experts, but they wouldn't know who to connect with the health expert. So I do it myself because I love it. And I try and spend like, 10 to 15 minutes every single day going through a group of people and just saying, man, who can I message today and just help them out? I'm going to send them a positive message. I can send them something on Instagram. I can uh, go and leave a book review for them. <clears throat> I can, you know, that's another thing. Like if somebody's like, I don't know where to start. I'm an author of three books. If you sent, if you put up a book review of Perfect Week Formula, screenshotted it and sent it to me, I'd be like in your Good grace, you'd be in my good graces forever. I'd be forever grateful because you might think, oh, I just left the book review, but I'm a book author. You don't know how much book reviews mean to a book author. So, 
So little stuff like that, it's really easy to, to, um, to connect with people. But I don't, I don't outsource that and I don't outsource some stuff on my Instagram because uh, I really like it and would do it, um, like you couldn't stop me from doing it. So those are a couple things that I will, oh, and writing. I will never stop writing. And uh, so that's why I don't outsource that sort of thing. Now there's something, the, the last thing I'll say on that, uh, as I'm a long-winded guy, as you can see, is that if there's something I want done, like Linda, go and buy this thing from Amazon. Linda's my assistant. Go and buy this thing from Amazon and send it to this person. Because I'm often sending out books to people um, with little notes because uh, it's like, oh man, I just read this thing or I just heard about this thing or this other leader said this book was really helpful, so I'll send it to this other person. And, and that... That you can outsource that stuff. 100%. You referred to something earlier. I'll send you my. I'll, I'll send you a screenshot of my spreadsheet. Uh, see what it looks after. like. Um, you referred to something earlier on because obviously I know you've switched industries from originally going from the fitness industry to now more the B two B marketing, helping people with their own businesses and careers. What would you say the biggest lessons you've learned from that pivot and switching industries? The coolest thing that I've learned is that. Some of my best clients in the coaching business followed me over from doing my workouts. So, and, and I'm, a lot of them were fitness industry people, right? So they, when I was selling my fitness workouts online, they bought my fitness workouts, used them with their clients. Then they might've heard that I was teaching people how to build an online business. So they maybe bought a course and then they saw me start doing workshops and coaching and they hired me as a coach. So that's a natural progression, right? Those people want all the information, but I've had people who, uh, you know, are in the finance world who originally found my workouts, did my workouts. And then when they found out I was a business and productivity coach and that sort of stuff, they hired me for that aspect. And I just look back and, and there's nothing I could have done different because I tried as much as possible to grow my business. But I just think like, if my business would have been five or 10 times bigger in the fitness industry, my coaching business would be five or 10 times bigger because I would just have that many people to draw into the coaching business. So it was really amazing that people who, once they see you as a guru in one area, they see you as a guru in another area. <clears throat> and you know, a great example of this is like, why, why on earth do we listen to celebrities about politics? Like, Maybe some of them are educated, but in most cases, they're not educated at all more than an expert. And yet the headlines are all about, well, this person thinks this about the current thing. And it's like, who cares? But we see them as some celebrity, uh, you know, because they were in a movie about something completely unrelated. They can make us laugh in a movie, but we're going to go to them for political advice. Like, it just doesn't make sense. But that's the way that the human mind works. So that was one thing that I learned on the positive side. And another thing on the positive side is that I never really thought about this. But I, I just, you know, I just made the transition because I wanted to make the transition. I wasn't happy just in the fitness industry and I loved writing about productivity and I loved doing coaching calls about productivity and I loved speaking from stage about productivity. But if you asked me to do a presentation about workouts, I would, I would feel so exhausted after. So I just naturally made the transition. And a lot of people, they just can't wrap their head around, how did you make this transition? And I'm like, I just went and did it. But for some reason, everybody thinks their feet are kind of stuck in concrete, whether it's moving out of their hometown or whether it is changing industries or doing something new. You're not at all stuck in concrete. And, you know, I know that, um, you know, you've moved not halfway around the world, but a fair distance. And there's probably a lot of people who you who've seen you do it just can't get their mind around doing it themselves when it's as easy as one, two, three. And so I was surprised by people's responses to it when I did it. Um, but for me, it was just pretty obvious. And that's where I was heading. I, I was probably headed there before I even started my fitness industry. I just didn't know how to get there because that was like really what I wanted. To do. It's funny because that sounds like me talking to myself because that's where I always wanted to go longer term. But I felt I had to achieve something first in another industry to be able to teach I had to be like an authority in a business which is successful to be able to teach business, which I think is congruent to a certain level. And it's interesting you, you also said yeah. about, because I've been amazed by this, the amount of people who bought fitness programs for me maybe three, four years ago, 
who are now a client on our mastermind is crazy. And it's funny when you look back, and I even said to a guy who signed up last month, it's like, it's crazy, you're the one of the first people who joined one of our programs. He got in great shape and then became a coach. And now he's come onto our next program and now we're helping him build his business. And it's, it's cool for me to see because I can help everyone through different parts of their journey and like changing their lives in different ways. Yeah, and I mean, hey, listen, people who bought Teslas, you know, are signing up for SpaceX to go into space. It's, it's once you get on in somebody's universe in their orbit, you're like, all right, if they got something else that's interesting, I'll jump on board with that too. So, you know, you're going to have a long life and you probably will go through some evolutions and iterations and embrace them and a lot of people will come along with you too. It's interesting as well. I, I find almost like every two, three years, I have a big evolution and change, like moving countries, moving industries, leaving. I left my full-time job four, year, four and a half years ago. I actually watched a video that I filmed the day I left my job, which we're going to play at a mastermind event tomorrow, which is quite emotional, but it's, uh, that gave me a, a lot of perspective. What? And that, that was like, you've done more movement than I have because you did movement from real estate to fitness and then from fitness to coaching. Now the fitness to coaching for you is pretty similar, but the first jump was huge. Completely different. But I was lucky that I, and I think about this more now, the skills I learned from the real estate background and managing people then is why I've transitioned very quickly and like ascended quite quickly because I had different skills other people in the industry didn't have that I think gave me an advantage because they were real yeah, skills. Yeah, they're, they're two-dimensional, right? Yeah, like no offense to most fitness industry people, but you know, you're, you, you have a technical expertise, much like a plumber. And you know, that's not going to get you as far as someone who... And, and it, it can be frustrating to people who have spent 10 or 15 years in the fitness industry, and then someone comes along from car sales who got into fitness last year, did a transformation, and now has a has a business and you're like well that's not fair but that's just the way that the world rewards things and they have a skill set that was that you know sales is a harder skill set to learn than you know watching your macros and going and working hard it's just the way it is and so you know with the exception of some people who are at a very high level of you know functional medicine or something like that in, in related to the fitness industry most of the fitness industry's skill set is pretty simple to achieve um, but the sales side is more difficult and, and really the mindset, um, fortunately the mindset is pretty, tra uh, tr you know, you can transition your mindset from working hard to selling, um, fairly, it's a fairly good crossover. 100%. One of the things you mentioned as well, in terms of switching industries, like the key thing, thing for you to be successful and that's obviously your reputation. I would say your strongest point is you have like. A plus strongest reputation out there in terms of what you do, like you're known as like the world's most productive man almost. Like how how would you say for anyone listening to this, maybe they're same age as me, early thirties, late twenties, early twenties, what would you do if you could go back again in terms of like, I want to build that type of reputation? So when somebody invented YouTube, <clears throat> you know, so YouTube like came around in 2007. And at the same time, there was this guy named Justin, and, and I think Justin eventually, uh, he created Twitch and sold Twitch to Amazon for a lot of money. But in 2007, he had a website called justin.tv. And justin.tv was him with a camera on his head 24 hours a day. And I was struck by that concept at the time because I thought that's a brilliant way of having integrity. Imagine having a camera on your head 24 hours a day. You would act appropriately 24 hours a day. You, you, know, you wouldn't yell at your dog. You wouldn't, um, you know, you wouldn't cheat as much with, uh, you know, at 11 o'clock at night when you're on a diet or something like that. And I never did put a camera on my head 24 hours a day, but I tried to start living like that. Um, and that was one thing, but, you know, it's always... It was my upbringing and stuff. You know, my parents were hard workers. And my mom took me to church and everything. So it was just like, that's what you do is you just, you go and you work hard and you be a person of your word. And that's how you be successful in life. So I think that was, that's what really drives it for me. 
I think the thing people don't understand as well that's important is like your reputation is going to compound for you. So the stronger that is, the quicker you can almost grow because people will talk about you and talk how great you are at certain thing and maybe how much you've helped them. And I think one of the things that's really allowed us to succeed with our mastermind is the amount of great results we've gotten people. And it's like completely changed their mindset and perspective of what can be done. It's so good that they have to tell other people almost. I mean, that's, that's the brilliant um, way of building a business is do something that people just talk about all the time. And, you know, then it's like, well, man, I, your advertising is more effective, but you know, if you, you could get to a certain point without even advertising at all. And, you know, the, one of the things that people did for me, fortunately, was um, this one guy, his name was Ed O'Keefe, and Ed was in the, is, um, in the supplement space and kind of coaches people on that. And Ed once called me the world's most productive person because Ed knew that I ran a fitness business and I ran the business coaching and the fitness business at the same time. And he's like, man, you're cranking out these email newsletters. You must be the world's most productive person. And then he may have called me the world's most disciplined man or somebody else called me that because in order to be productive, you, you, know, you associate that with discipline. And then once somebody else heard that, then they started saying, and I think it, obviously like I'm not David Goggins. Um, I might not even be the world's most disciplined civilian, but the reason why I'm disciplined is because I built these systems. And so it gives this reputation and, you know, people will say it when they start podcasts with me and all sorts of things. And again, it's like not me, it's them because I don't like saying it, but people love saying it for their audience because it quickly gives you a snapshot of like who this person is and what you, you know, you can frame them pretty quick. 100%. One of the um, gifts I say you have is in terms of like leadership and culture, and you've got an amazing team of coaches in your business and some great people you work with, obviously like Gavin who works with us as well. What do you do in terms of like building great coaches and bringing them into your team? Most of our coaches, um, like you know, uh, the client that you have who was in your other business, they really have been clients for a long time. So Daniel, who's our leadership coach, I mean, he and I have been business partners in a, in a gym, a couple of gyms, Fit Body Boot Camps in South Carolina for almost 10 years. We just sold our last one. <clears throat> so, and before that, he was a certified turbulence trainer when I had a certification program back in 2011. You know, so this guy, young guy, I've known for a long time, and I've seen him coach other people. And it's just like, man, this guy's perfect fit. Um, and I know... I can depend on him and this, that, and the other thing. And for a long time, I was doing some mentoring of other trainers, certified turbulence trainers uh, to be specific. And I was testing them out to see if they could become business partners of mine because I was going to open a bunch of gyms with them. And I would give them a task. I would give them five questions they had to answer every Tuesday by 5 p.m. Because for me, I need people to be on time and prompt and get back to me. And if they don't, then my brain starts to kind of focus on them. So I knew that if somebody was going to be late, they weren't going to be a good business partner. And it quickly weeded out people. Like you can't even email me. You agreed to email me the answers to these five questions every Tuesday by 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And in two weeks, you missed it. Um, this is not going to work because uh, I'm, I'm angry or I'm upset and I'm wondering where the heck you are. This is not going to work. I'm sorry. Nice, nice doing business with you. So I, you know, doing little tests like that and then so on and so forth. And Gavin wasn't a client, but he was a client of Xander Fryers. And he was a recommendation from our salesperson, a guy named Rusty at the time. Um, and Rusty was in Xander's mastermind too. And he said, Gavin's amazing. You know, we should try him out for coaching on our team. He had a lot of background similar to mine. You know, he's a gym owner. He was an athlete. He's that sort of stuff. And he had been coaching a little bit. So yeah, it was a good fit. And then our other coach, Golel, he had come to one of my events with Bedros 10 years ago and then kind of, you know, went off into the wilderness and did his own thing. And then he joined our coaching. And after about a year, his coach, a guy named Ron, who now just only does sales for us, Ron said, if we're looking for another coach, Golel is going to be amazing for it. And he's right. So a lot of them come through the network. Um, we'll you know, as we expand, it won't be that easy to get them, but that's a, that's a great place for it. 
And a lot of like bigger coaching organizations, they kind of let anybody who gets certified through their organization become a coach and it gets watered down a bit. But the way that we build organically from inside, there isn't that watered down aspect of it. And it's, you know, we get the, the best people. Uh, they're, they're more committed to the mission because they have that personal connection um, as opposed to somebody who's maybe just watched a course or something and gets certified like in some other, other, other organizations. But it's really powerful, and that's how we've, we've been able to do it. And they have a pretty strong brotherhood among them um, and lean on each other. So that uh, becomes a really great organism and ecosystem is the word I was looking for uh, for our coaching. The last thing I want to ask you, which I think is an interesting one, you left almost tyrannical, tyrannical Canada to move to Mexico. Um, I live in Dubai. That's the polar opposite in terms of cultures, very fast paced. How do you stay motivated in a slower culture, maybe somewhere like Mexico? Or did you find that uh, the difficult balance or different balance? It's not because, um, first of all, I'm not... You know, even if I lived in Dubai, I really, I, I would probably be in my house most of the time. <laughs> um, so I'm not, I'm not that influenced by the people around. Now, you know, what drives me is my internal drive. And I think, you know, it's unlikely you will lose your internal drive no matter where you go, unless you put yourself and immerse yourself in people who don't have internal drive. So I think that's probably the more important thing. The other thing is that while... I mean, I actually don't, I think Mexico maybe gets a bad rap because Mexicans are very hard workers and they, you know, the construction guys that I see mostly, you know, they're here at seven in the morning. They, they work in unbelievable conditions, like 35 degrees Celsius and 80% humidity. <laughs> and they're, they wear sweatshirts. I'm like, I don't understand. I don't understand. Like growing up in that temperature, you just become so normalized to heat and when I see some guy wearing a sweatshirt in, in July in Mexico, my, my brain falls out of my head. But anyway, so, so you know, they're hard workers, uh, a lot of them, and there's lazy people in every country. So it's not actually um, super slow. I'm not, I don't see a lot of examples of super slow. It's a little bit slower in some of the service and stuff like that. But I also live in a community where there's a lot of people from Australia, America, Canada, even England. And so, you know, even those English guys uh, have a pretty good pace. So I'm actually surrounded mostly by, you know, people driving their Porsche at six o'clock in the morning to go to work. So it's actually not, I'm not actually immersed in a, in a slower paced culture unless you were to go maybe downtown Cancun for like some tacos at a small joint. You know, so it's, it's not really that, that way for me. Um, but even if it was, I think my internal drive, I just would, I always get up at the same time. I always do my writing. I always do this, that, or the other thing. That's the, that's the thing that you could put me in almost any environment and I'd still probably do that. One of the, um, things I love is your perspective on things and also your ability in terms of like your process of setting goals. Would you mind me asking what are your business goals in terms of 2024 or like anything you're particularly focusing on or how you look at that process for yeah example. so yeah so so funny thing is we're probably going to go back to vancouver in early 2024 and spend the year there um i don't know what we'll do in 2025 but we're probably going to do that and so before COVID, i used to do a lot of small group workshops you know frank den blanken was at one in 2018 it was life-changing for him um, we never got you to one, but you know, we do the mastermind meetings. And so my goal is to, <clears throat> even though it's not natural for me to want to do the events, like I just said, I'm kind of like just stay at home kind of guy. I'm going to try and do a lot of events in 2024 and get a lot of people, you know, just like I did before COVID shut my workshops down and my, I don't think we'll do like a big 300 person event. We did four of those or three, three of those in 2017, 18, and 19. Um, we had 300 people at my perfect life retreat. I don't think I'll do one in 2024, but maybe 2025. So returning to live events and really pushing on that because much like building a network or a connection, there's nothing beats face-to-face in person. Nothing. Nothing even comes close to it. And therefore, 
it's going to be helpful to the business, even though it's not natural for me to do it. So my plan is to probably do, I might do like maybe 15 live events in 2024 and, and get back on that. 100%. If you, uh, if you do some workshops, particularly for Vancouver, I'll be there. So if you, if you let me know, I'll, uh, I'll make the trip. Good. But I, I do, I do plan on doing some in oh, Dubai. Yeah, sure. Like I've got my little networking list and, um, you know, it'd be nice to fund a trip. If you do want to Dubai, I can guarantee you I can help you fill it. We've got loads of people here. So like we've got the event with 60 people tomorrow. So uh, there'll be no issue with that. Yeah. Um, big thank awesome. you for your time, Craig, and wisdom as always. Where's the best place for people to find out more about you, books you have? And I would also say that your emails when I was working with you were one of the, like, the highlights of my week. Your ability in terms of like expressing your thought process in the written word is like amazing. So... Um, I can't recommend checking out any of Craig's writings. You should you should subscribe. You can subscribe just to the oh, email yeah, newsletter. Yeah, yeah. You should get back on that. Okay, I'll do that. Yeah, I'll send uh, send an email between you and Linda yeah, after great. this. But um, best place to find me is on Instagram. So people hit me up. You may you know if you're interesting, you might get added to my <laughs> connections list. And uh, and uh, the best book for somebody to read to get started with is from PerfectWeekFormula.com. So go there. It's so last book I've written. I, I probably should add for 2024, maybe 2025. I definitely want to write another book because I'm a bookworm and I've got some more stuff I want to share. So that's another goal. But the last book I wrote was perfectweekformula.com. Grab that book. It will just help you get your personal self organized so that you can crush it in business. Awesome. I uh, appreciate your time, Craig. Uh, everyone who loved the podcast, make sure you like it, share it, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next episode soon.